Thank you, member. Member for Burnaby Lougheed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the member next to me. Um, thank you, Honorable Speaker. And uh, of course, thanks to the member opposite for her statement on the local successes our diverse trades have achieved through the tough economic conditions in British Columbia. As always, it's my privilege to respond on behalf of Burnaby Lougheed. Now, empowering not just some, but a broad spectrum of local trade initiatives is imperative for not just strong, but also resilient economy that can support jobs and fund uh, services long term for, again, not just some, but all British Columbians in every corner of this province. We get that on this side of the house, and that's exactly what we have been consistently calling for right from the beginning. And as we are all aware, British Columbia is a trading province with a wealth of not just natural resources, but agricultural goods, technological and professional services from all regions for export. Our province is inherently positioned to be Canada's natural Pacific gateway. So yes, there is no arguing that we should be seeking strategic global opportunities, and especially since the years of feed dragging has already put us well behind our competitors. A comprehensive trade agreement with Asia Pacific is therefore one of the key ways that we must pursue to diversify and strengthen our local economy. And as such, the members of this house supported the federal free trade agreement with Korea last year. That said, um, we must remain disciplined in recognizing and also addressing the fact that our province still exports mostly unprocessed, low value added, and often carbon intensive resources, the price of which actually decreased by more than a third in the last few years, while we continue to import mostly manufactured electrical, uh, electrical and uh, technological goods at a much higher value added prices. We know of this government's laser-focused preoccupation with the liquefied natural gas sector, and it was a welcome finding that I heard from the member opposite today that um, that one company she mentioned alone, we are looking at 60,000 direct jobs, which is, a, which is a big contrast to the recent um, LNG project agreements that the government brought forward uh, with prospects of 330 jobs. So it's, uh, it, that's an interesting note here. But with that said, though, the all eggs in one basket approach of the Liberals did cause for grave concern by both the industry experts as well as the community stakeholders, as we saw many other valuable drivers of our economy inflicted with growth limitations and even decline in some, um, some key sectors like technology, film, science, as well as services. So of course, I absolutely welcome the latest change in the tune from the Liberal bench, claiming support for the diversified economy, as that should have been the obvious priority for all levels of government from the get-go. Now, I would like to take a few minutes to highlight some key trade sectors in our province that will benefit from attention from this government. Our province's tourism sector has improved, but not kept pace with the rest of the economy, with its growth well below the average in other industries. And we are talking about one in 15 British Columbians depending on jobs in this industry alone. And this industry accounts for more than a third of our GDP in accommodation, food services, and transportation, all generated by tourist spending. So I urge the government to be sensitive to the small businesses right here on our soil, especially in the coastal communities that's been challenged with the ferry cuts as well as also those of us in Metro Vancouver whose livelihood depends on the steady and the growing international traffic. On the agricultural side, because of the large government subsidies to the industrial system and imported foods, and of course with the Liberal Bill 24 weakening our ALR last year, it still remains difficult for our local farmers to compete in our own BC market. With 95% of what BC eats being imported, that's $25 billion leaving the province instead of going to our local economy, and so we need real commitments and action from this government. Lastly, we all know that the contribution of the high-tech sector to the economy of this province is paramount. While it is great that the sector has grown steadily over the years, we still import four times as much as we export. We still have a relatively small market share compared to all other provincial and American jurisdictions, and our potential is far from being realized. So the stakeholders in this industry have long called for investment in the local initiatives to grow the domestic market so we can have the kind of economic scale required to compete with the U.S. jurisdictions that have nationwide market for them to base off on um, for access, local usage, as well as uh, export opportunities. So now, Mr. Speaker, I can go on, but as it is, you know, 
certainly important that we celebrate the performance of our diverse tra uh, trade sector, I do want to respectfully caution the government that while it's tempting to take credit for the progress that we have seen in these industries, we do need to look deeper into the actual numbers and Thank trends you, to identify the ways we've come short at our end Thank and you. consider ways we can do better to foster growth in this industry. Thank you. Thank you,